By the way, a new movie came out, pretty interesting. Uh, the Killers of Flower Moon. Oh, the uh, uh, Tarantino. Yes. Tarantino. Tarantino. <laughs> is, it his, is it his last movie? I think it so. It should be him. Yeah. He said he's going to put that movie and then he's going to put a series. So I guess this is the movie. and then Can't wait for him to die. <sighs> With him? Yeah. You don't like him. <laughs> <I'm not looking laughs> the way he said, I've been waiting for this. <laughs> Are you dying? <laughs> Bring has to put, put a curse actually, on his I'll name. I'll say this on the show, actually. I'll say this on the show. We are in the show. Do you want us to? Oh, no, we started? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> no. Okay, you want to say it? Like, oh, we started? Now I'm camera shot. <laughs> now I'm going to talk. Oh, we started? <laughs> <laughs> so, Quentin Tarantino. Um, I don't know if you guys know this. On YouTube, there's videos that show that Quentin Tarantino is obsessed with feet. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I've seen. Yeah, I've and, heard about it. <laughs> and there's a meme going around that uh, when you're secretly, but not so secretly, addicted to feet... And you cast one of the hottest women in Hollywood and then cast yourself as the guy she puts her feet in his mouth. Yeah. Which know. movie was that from? I forgot. Um, yeah. It's called From Dust to Dawn. I'm, mm, yeah. I've seen that one. one of the he only one has like eight movies out or something, right? Quentin Tarantino? Yeah. He has, I, I would say like a box set. So it'd be like around eight or something. Like that. Yeah. Yeah. Got Kill up. Bill. He had Kill Bill, Reservoir Dogs. Um, uh, Django. Django. There's so many more. Once There's Upon a Time in Death Hollywood. Blow? Death Blow. I don't know that one. It's a, it's a pretty fucked up one. But which one isn't? Yeah, but the thing is that this one it doesn't really have a storyline to it. To it, but it's mm. it's a it's it's exactly the same artistic style of Kill Bill. If you've seen it, it's like it's yeah. you know. I um, hate Kill Bill so much. I, I love it. It was so dope. Nine, twelve. 14, he has a really good 15, movie called The Hateful Eight. Eight. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's really good. Yeah, it's slow, but, but my favorite one was. Uh, Django? I can't decide between Django and Once Upon a Time in Hollywood. Yes. Yeah, that one was pretty and, good. And you know, for the me... The ending scene especially. I think the ending scene for me made the movie what it was. Yeah, yeah, 100%. Yeah. God. The, but the, the new movie coming out, that movie, I think it's called Killers of Flower Moon or something like that. It's based on a true story. It's very interesting. Don't they say that there's like a, like a storyline that connects all of his movies together? Yeah, like there some, is, there's something about that, right? There know. is something, there is something like that, and I have seen videos where they connect things where, like, apparently Django was in one newspaper, like in a scene of a newspaper for Hateful Eight, something like that. Yeah, they all so, connect somehow. So I think that's a beautiful thing if you could if you could kind of connect all your movies. Like, did you know that George Lucas and um, who's the guy uh, Steven Spielberg would put hints of their movies in each other's uh, uh, movies? So George Lucas is from Star Wars, right? George Lucas is from Star Wars. Uh, Steven Spielberg is from Indiana Jones. Mm. No, Indiana I didn't know that. So Indiana Jones is a scene where he goes into like a temple and a ruin, and then you see the the two robots from Star Wars and a hieroglyphic on the wall. Oh shit! Yeah, yeah. That's so cool. It's, it's really really interesting. Uh-huh. And I mean, if you can do that kind of stuff in your movies, it's pretty great. But I know you don't like Quentin Tarantino, but he has a lot of like. His artistic style is really really interesting. Like, come on, J- Django's action is yeah, super. Yeah, Django was good. Uh, just like ten Kimble and stuff. Ten. Oh. You've been counting ten numbers since then. No, I counted thirty nine. <laughs> <laughs> That's why I was confused. No, so. he might have been an executive producer. Or yeah, so else. I was like, how? I had to literally be like, how many? So the article says how many films uh, Quentin Tarantino has made and why he counts as wrong. Mm. So because like Kill Bill, who only counts as one, like shit like but, that. But so. Kill Bill itself was so iconic, also <clears throat> because I think that I, th- I think that Kill I Bill. Think I watched it later. Oh yeah. L- later on, so to me, it was like. No, no, but the thing is that with Kill Bill, especially when you watch that kind of movie, it's very, um, you know how in the in in Asia you have movie that's a westernized. Mm-hmm. It's like his spin is like Western movies Asianized. Right. Okay. So it's all about samurai. There's like a code of honor, the style and the fighting, yeah. and John Wick does the same exact now. John Wick is no, like no, the level of martial arts are very different, bro. But I talk yeah. about the overall goriness and the I know, big I know. scenes of but, fighting. But for me, when there's like a like an action movie and the martial arts is bullshit, it pulls me out of it. Like I watched Expendables. Four. Give the intro, then we'll talk about it. Hey everyone, I know you've been listening, but welcome to the Cancelable Podcast. My name is Bardia. I'm here with Kurosh. Hey. Okay. Hello and hello, <laughs> and Faisal. Hey guys, what's up? All what's right. Up so- <laughs> <laughs> what up? Uh, I watched The Expendables 4 yeah. and 
the action was so fucking horrible in it. They just pulled me out of it. The action and the CGI was so bad. The CGI was horrible. The CGI was like like a know, Modern Warfare 2 level. CGI was exactly how... Remember Wolverine Origin? When like it shows how Wolverine was made and everything? Yeah. In Iran, before the movie came out, they released it without the CGI edit. So you could see when the laser goes off, you could actually see the cartoon building and like actual graph. Like that, like they you don't got a copy, yeah. You don't got a copy, but everything it. we would get earlier, like all of the PS5 game, PS like PlayStation games and shit, we would get it like two weeks before the release date. Yeah. <laughs> 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 Instead of Assassin's Creed, it's just called Ask Creed. Yeah, <laughs> Creed actually did real name. <laughs> but the so it, it was that level of CGI, yeah. it was shit. But I told you, the only thing good about the movie is the fact that the Megan blood Fox. and everything. Oh. <laughs> yeah, and, uh, but like the blood and everything in it it's pretty cool like yeah but the, the, the CG for the blood was so bad but the thing is a bit, are we okay. talking about Kill Bill or are we talking about Expendables Expendables, Expendables 4 because Expendables 1 and 2 was very successful but Expendables 3 was like a downslope and the, one of the main reasons for it, uh, other than the whole gossip behind it and shit like that was the fact that they moved it from 18 plus to a PG-15 movie so they took out all the proper action scenes that like everyone was like lusting for. So when the fourth one came out, they again upped it to 18 plus. So it was nice to see that again. But seeing Sylvester Stallone on a, I watched it at the cinema. Seeing Sylvester Spoiler. Stallone on a big Oh I thought you gotta go to a specific screen. scene. Big no screen. no no on the big screen, you really see the man aged. Yeah. Like it was it was really sad to see because it was like what, what do you call that when half of your face is like paralyzed? Paralyzed. Uh, yeah, but that was something he had his whole life. When he was a kid, apparently, um, when he was when he was born, when they were using the forceps to remove him, they severed something. in what his... What they grabbed him? Yeah, the wrong out. No, but that's li- that's literally what that's happened. That's actually what happened. That's, that's the the doctor was like, "I can't." <laughs> is it the head? So <laughs> imagine if they grabbed him by both, he'd be coming out like Joker. <laughs> like, what? No, but so serious. <laughs> serious. They fucking fish hooked him out of there. <laughs> no, no, but that's actually that's actually the re- that's actually how, why I have a lot of respect. You know how they say pussy smell like fish sometimes. <laughs> <laughs> You've heard that, yeah, yeah. But what, what's what's because this? Fish he's hook. a fish, fish hook, you know? <laughs> <laughs> no, yeah, I get you, I get you. But <laughs> the the thing is that with uh, Sylvester Stallone, you know, um, first of all, these kind of movies where you have seventy year olds that are completely jacked up on steroids. Come on, not like, expensive four. It was only two. They like recasted the whole original cast. Like Arnold wasn't in it, was not in it. Jet Li wasn't in it. No, no, but the thing is that when you watch, like you see, you should gracefully adapt your your actors, right? Like, first of all, for me, um, Sylvester Stallone was a big part of me growing up. Mm. Rocky. Rocky. Not all of us. Uh, like no, no, but the thing is that, you know, one thing that was really nice, um, and I have a lot of respect for Sylvester Stallone, is that when he wrote Rocky, he put his uh, issues with his speech and stuff like that. You know, apparently he didn't write it, right? <laughs> he didn't write it. He wrote it. It's always, but the thing was that the script he had, he's yeah. the one who brought the script, yeah. right? And uh, the overall idea and the story behind it of him having to sell his dog and getting it back later. Uh, I don't know if anyone knows this, right? I but uh, Rocky had a dog in the, in the movie. Okay. And when, before making the movie, he was, bang- he was broke, so uh, to keep it going and to dream alive, he had to sell a dog to someone. So he sold the dog to someone and they kept it as a pet. And he had the money that he was able to uh, basically sh- you know, get the script out there so then to start making the movie. And with his first paycheck, he went and back to that person and bought his dog back. Oh, and that's the same dog in the movie. That's nice. So, that's so the thing is that uh, I have a lot of respect for him because if you look at the script, it's a lot to do with his life also because of how he had that speech impediment. Right. Uh, and he's actually his face is like that. It it it's a very you know it's his life. It's like parallel to yeah yeah. So yeah. it's it's pretty interesting. But like when you watch like I would never watch Expendables four. I love these guys. I grew up with Arnold Schwarzenegger. You know, but you have to then adapt the character. Like Arnold Schwarzenegger now is, is still a cr- crazy fit guy for his age. Yeah yeah. Sylvester Stallone also. But come on, I'm not gonna watch a movie where this guy is supposedly gonna take on. Um, oh, Jason Statham did most of the heavy lifting there. No, but Jason Statham is not the same age as them. No, I know. You know? That's what I'm saying. Like it's in about this one, that. it's more Jason Statham than. It's basically mm. all the action, other than like some new people that they've brought in. All the action is heavily on Jason Statham to do. 
It's not a lot of other people. <laughs> you see Sylvester, get him! <laughs> and it's just him standing there. And he's Actually, <laughs> spoiler, but spoiler. yeah. Spoiler. <laughs> he starts with that. He's like, oh, my back hurts. Like, Can you do it? <laughs> no, okay, that's smart then. That's yeah, smart yeah. way of doing it. But um, yeah, man, Jet Li even. Like, you know, Jackie Chang. These guys are who we grew, I grew up with. You know, Chan. Is it Jackie Chan or Chang? Chan. Jackie Chan. You right. just said Chang. Uh, Chan. You ching sorry. it up. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, sorry. So it's Jackie Chan. <laughs> yeah. Jackie Chan as well, bro. Jackie Chan, him, Sylvester Stallone, Arnold, like childhood wise, like those were all the action heroes. Dude, even even those. So I didn't fucking know. Rambo's, bro. You know Predator, you, Predator, Predator, yeah, Predator two, yeah. yeah. No, he's shit. in Predator one. Yeah, no. he's in Predator two. Oh, Five. Predator two. Okay, I know, I know what yeah, you mean. Yeah. But even Jet Li, I don't know if you've ever seen Jet Li's movies. Yeah, yeah. He had the. Enter the Dragon or Kiss Kiss of the Dragon and stuff. Yep. He aged so much now, man. He aged so much. Jackie Chan also. Sorry, Kiss of the Dragon. Remember the chips, the blue and pink chips they were eating? This, that's prawn chips. Okay, that shit sucks as my opinion. But that I shit, like prawn chips. I you fucking like hate it. it. So when I was a kid, I watched that movie. I can't believe you remember it because of the dragon. Like that was such a like you hit the spot. Like Bro, that's the that yeah. movie. I probably watched like seven, ten, seven, eight times. Like. So many, I loved it. It was dope ass fucking movie. But and I always was like, dude, the way they're so obsessed with the chips, like I wonder what they taste like and everything. Maybe I had it at the wrong place. Like I didn't have it in China, for for example. I had it like here. I had a taste of it. I was like, this shit sucks ass. Like I, I don't even want to like like it kind of like cut my whole appetite. It's so. a unique taste. You know what really ruined like a childhood memory for me was finding out that Bruce Lee, like all his noises in the movies weren't his. And someone dubbed over it. What do you mean, like Die Hard? No, no. Wada! Yeah, all of those. None of that is Bruce Lee. I'm sorry, I, I mistook Bruce Lee with Bruce Willis. That's why I said Die Hard, like Bruce Lee. Yeah. <laughs> well, I mean, Bruce Lee did Die Hard. <laughs> <laughs> he did. He did like get. You know, he got his, poisoned. Yeah. You know how his son died? Got shot in the show. On uh, a movie, the movie set. Raven. Yeah. The Raven. Yeah. Was it? Uh, it was supposed to be like a prop gun. <laughs> and it wasn't. Is it, was it but, Alan? Uh, was it Alan Baldwin? Yeah. <laughs> was it that guy? It, Similar. No, no. But isn't that funny? Like, so, so they're saying not that, for him. Not for him and his dad. I mean, uh -huh. like, <laughs> <laughs> you want to do it again? <laughs> <laughs> Take two. You wanna? <laughs> but did, you, did you ever watch the Raven? I never watched it. No. Apparently, it's a or is it called the Crow or something like that? But uh, yeah, isn't it so funny that multiple of actors have died, so called, with a. With a bullet that was supposed to be a hollow bullet, but it. Uh, how, do you, how did they make that mistake? Because so the, the one with the Alec Baldwin one, yeah. if I remember correctly, so e each movie set that requires guns, they have someone like, let's call them like the gun safety person, right? Okay. And their whole job is to prep the guns properly, blank bullets, or whatever, because there's different methods of faking a gunshot. And uh, for that movie, this this guy that's been in the business for 30 years, his daughter comes and takes his place and his, the daughter is not experienced at all. Okay. It's just based on like the reputation of the dad. And I don't I don't know what happened, like what was the actual end of the case, but it was that she misprepared the gun. So, but the bullet was real. Yeah, yeah. so, so she wasn't meant to put a real bullet because for certain scenes, they use real bullets. Like let's say if you're shooting into the into the fucking sand pit or something. Yeah. There's no point of sieging that. So you just shoot a real bullet. But for the scenes that the you're like shooting at someone, you put a fake bullet. But but Damn. but they also said that the difference between a bullet that's a blank and a bullet that's a bullet, there's you couldn't tell. You can't tell. Like it's so identical. There's no there's no difference with it. That's why they were saying that only one of the two bullets were were a real bullet. And when Alec Baldwin shot the person, he was like, wow, she's like he kept shooting because he thought it was a blank one. No, he thought like she was acting. Oh, okay. So when he shot in this kind of stuff, I thought someone outside of the like the scene got shot. Not like no, no. But he was the pointing action. the gun no, at someone and at, he shot. It was at someone. Oh, it was, I, 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 it, it, it was I a scene. So I mean, can you imagine how shitty that must be? Like you're 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 an actor and you're doing a scene and you know he got a lot of hate for it because he's one of the producers of the show. Right. So he has apparently based on the contract. It's his responsibility to make sure the safety of the set. Ooh. Yeah, so that's why he's getting a lot of shit about it. And the thing, imagine you're doing a scene with someone and they fall down and like, you know, they have these blood um, pockets they put. Yeah. So, and you're like, okay, get up. And you, the person's dead. Like, can you imagine how much them, it must fuck you up? Yeah. 
Uh, not for long. Bro, imagine if you and Barty were doing a scene, you shot Barty up. Yeah, if we're that close, yeah. But no, no, but 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 I mean, well, if it's a like, random actor, like no, I'll no, be but come sad on, think of it like this, like, yeah. When you see when you're making a movie, it's not like you sit there for just for a day or two. Like you I know, guys, I know. This, you, you know, you. But it's morning, not like like he maybe, shot Robert De Niro. Like he shot an extra, like a, you know, and also, like an actor that's not like they're that close to each other. This is just an idea. There's <laughs> a difference. <laughs> it's not like I said, like, like if you shot like Denzel Washington, or they don't have souls. Like, that would be yeah. Like there's no. Of course, it's sad, but you get over value, but. It's, well, it's, a, it's subjective. Uh, look, look at the... Sp- it's subjective to you. Bro, uh, <laughs> millions of people die every day. Just think about it like this. How Are you going to be depressed about one of them or all of them or just like the per- people who you're close with? That's that's the thing. But the act of killing you, yeah, that makes it much more... But you can get over it. It's just that I was thinking that Bro, what because... About the guilt? Get it's, over it. Because he's... It's not actor. your fault. It's not like he did it, you know? If, if he, he was... He pulled the trigger. I know, but if you're at some point, you can forgive yourself. I definitely could forgive myself. Yeah, I think you'd get, I think you forgive yourself while they're taking the body to the morgue. Yeah, you know that's fucked up, man. But depends depends who I shot. So like be- if it was a person that was like really like, let's say like a Robert De Niro or something, I'd feel bad for a long time. But also he's old, so like you know. Okay, what if yeah. you shot? What if you shot someone? Yeah. And you talk to them just the day before, and they're like, "Yeah, I'm doing this for my kids. I'll take care of the family if I'm." Alec Baldwin level rich, yeah. If I'm me right now, fuck their family, shoot Bro. them too. <laughs> <laughs> Might as well <laughs> put them out of their misery. No, no, no but no. I was saying that like because of the maybe because he's an actor, actually that will help him because you have like some of the actors get like really fucked up because of how like their acting life and the role they take on kind of like merge into their personal life and personal identity. But if you're able to ha- be an actor that has a really good way to compartmentalize that, like, set of, like, how you are in a role and how you are in real life, that might actually help him get over that because to he'll cope. be just associated with, like, something that has happened and this is my identity I need to save it and blah, blah, blah. He won't be as funny for a while or he will be very good at dark humor. Have you? Did you see how he looked afterwards? So when I he really shot the person, the when he shot them, and like everyone was calling out for him to be like arrested and stuff like that, they have video footage of him finding out she died. Right, dude, he, 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 like he did an interview afterwards. His eyes were swollen. Like he looked like he aged at least like ten more years in in a in the span of a week. Yeah. Probably makes sense. Yeah, I mean, it is an emotional trauma. Like, it's not like they're not like taking any light of the situation. That, no, like, but I definitely think not... you can get over. It. No, no, of course you can. Yeah. But the thing is that, like, look, dude, think of it like this. Yeah, I had a guy. Um, that person that was in charge of the gun safety thing should. That's, yeah, that's different. They should be liable. Like, like the, you I know? think they they will be. Like, they but he, no, he's the like one they because it goes be... to him. Well, that too, but I contractual think be wise, but like based on contract. But I'm saying in reality, yeah. the, this. This person's job is to check real bullet, fake bullet. Yeah. You know, like if you failed at this job, it costs someone's life. Like you're the sole, like I feel like actually based on contract, the responsibility is shared. But in reality of life, that person is the only person responsible because their role and their only role in that fucking movie scene, like whatever production, mm. is to do that. So that, that's what I'm saying. No, but also like let's a different scenario. Let's say you own a garage, right? And you have employees, they put the car on the big jack and a client goes under, the car falls on them. Okay. The person that dropped it is reliable, but also you as the owner of the business, it, it like true, you're true. reliable too. Yeah, yeah, I understand. I'm saying that. Even like, morally, you're reliable too because you hired that guy. Fair enough. I don't personally feel that way, but no, you know, based on like no the morally, legality. no morally, you wouldn't be entitled. Also, if, it, if the system of the jack broke. No, but if the guy did it wrong. If the oh, guy yeah. did it this, wrong, this is her fault, right? She did it wrong. It's not like mm, yeah, yeah, not true. The but manufacturer gave the wrong. In your it. scenario, the yeah. client that went under the car is also liable. No, the, yeah, the not what are you gonna to do? Go fucking no, under what if the, the car? Guy was like, come look at this. <laughs> uh, that's that way, yeah. But I'm saying, if you go under the car, like even when you pass construction sites, like you see. <laughs> they say if you pass this area, shit might fall. Bro, what the fuck is a hard hat supposed to do? Have you seen like when wear a hard hat when you go to construction sites? It she depends. It depends. If it's like a brick, yeah. If a whole floor falls on you, okay. then, no, no. <laughs> like, you know, let's think no. of it like this. Yeah, let's think of it like this. So in the UK, when you have construction and like these towns and stuff, it's not that crazy. But in Dubai, yeah, when you see these towers being built and they're like must wear a hard hat, and then you go on the eighty sixth floor and like first of all, you know, I have a fear of heights. Com- right, complete fear of heights. Yeah. Those um, 
those, what is it? What are they called? Those um, towers that, the, the cranes? Right. That are built on top of the building? Yeah. That high up, that sway and shit? Yeah. What's a hard hat going to do for you there? But the hard hat isn't for that, like, let's say you're on 86th floor. The hard hat is not just in case you fell, it's going to break your fall. It's like when you're on the 86th floor, if someone threw a brick for some reason. <laughs> on the 86th. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah, no. but, yeah, a, <laughs> but first of all, what's a brick doing on the 86th floor? Well, they got to put They're the walls on the somehow. 87th floor. <laughs> <laughs> but we don't use bricks. But you came bro, up with it's a brick. example. Okay, <laughs> shovel, <laughs> sand, no, cement, sand bag. on the eighty sixth floor. Yes, yeah, bag of bro. They gotta build a so- building with something. Like it's not like they spit it up. Like, hey, baby, uh, I think you're being like really racist when you said like, okay, here it's like we Arabs we use all our building have sand. Bro, concrete has sand. In. <laughs> like you need sand. Yeah, in but would you do it on the eighty sixth floor. I don't fucking know. <laughs> 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 you're acting like I built half of Dubai. <laughs> like, no, I didn't. Here, no? Yeah, Dubai would be still at the desert level if I wasn't charged. <laughs> like, nothing but would be. Inter- in- I built this. It's like a stair. Over one story, I'm done. <laughs> Hard hats are necessary in case something drops or whatever. But not not just like you said, building or like the fucking metal like bars that those cranes are used to like carry. Yeah, it's not built by Iron Man. The, it's not going to like <laughs> turn no, can into Can you imagine sh- if one of these iron columns falls on a guy and like it just squashes him like an accordion? Bro, in my... Like uh, a- my dad had a construction site in Iran. I don't know if I've told you this story before, but uh, some guy fell from the fifth floor. Brain fit, like head first. Just exp- hard hat? No hard hat. That's why. <laughs> Bro, <laughs> his head exploded like a watermelon on the ground. On the fifth floor? No, from, he, the, fifth. from the fifth floor. Yeah, from the To fifth. the street. Yeah. Uh, he exploded. My dad said his foot was in his neck. Like. Accordion. Yeah, yeah. And the funny part, well, I don't know if it's funny or not. The day before, they, like, you know how they... Somebody got to oh, get you that said railing. That. Someone <laughs> yeah. did the... They, they sacrificed the sheep for good luck. He fell right exactly where they sacrificed the sheep. <laughs> well, was, this a, was this a residential or was this a... Yeah, a residential uh, building, yeah. Did you blame it on the goat? No, the guy... <laughs> Yeah, at court. No, 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 no. Think of it in court. Like we, no, sacrifi- you can't blame it on the goat. No, you sacrifice the goat to get rid of the bad spirits, and they retaliate. <laughs> Bro, we're talking about legal shit it's here. Illegal. I know no, it's like, Iran, but like- we didn't have like a voodoo guy with Why'd smoke you kill coming. The goat? It, it's not. It's a sheep. First of all, second of all, wow. Sorry for mi- like <laughs> no mis- species. No, but at the same time, this is like a part of the culture. You just sacrifice one. You cut the throat for good luck. For a good uh, whatever, good omen. You don't have. By the way, you have to fix that because like, yeah, we just celebrate. We just cut next, like no, hey, the, the, the sheep, the sheep, the sheep. Happy birthday! <laughs> <laughs> it's a party. <laughs> but yeah, so when, a, anything that gets done in Iran, you kill a goat. Not everything, but like sometimes you do it like for like a, not a goat first of all. Can you imagine? Bro, can you imagine you're in a school? It's just been built. All the kids are waiting. Guys, what are we gonna do today, bro? Go, oh yeah, <laughs> we, we, we said the story on the podcast. I, I think it was that episode I, one. It was a one? Or it could have been the episode we never posted. Oh, shit, yeah. So, yeah. wait, wait. So, you all line up. Yeah. They have the anthem. They bring a ghost. All the kids <laughs> they don't the play the national anthem, bro. <laughs> we, we play the national anthem here in the morning. We yeah, in the morning, school. yeah, but not to sacrifice a sheep. <laughs> like, you know, no, but can like... you imagine, like, the school's getting open, right? Like, you're... So, I'm, ass- I'm assuming in Iran, you have the same thing where... Uh, you line up. And yeah, you they line up. The they do roll anthem. call over, and then you go to class. But they yeah. make us do a Nazi salute in the morning. Yeah. Like actually, yeah. No, no. <laughs> it's up like this, and then like this, and then, and then you, next to you, and then you this like to put order. So like, like let's say like, uh, and then gr- you all like line up with your hands to okay, your sides. We, gotta, like we this. gotta explain an audio just in case people are, are watching you, oh, yeah, on yeah, Spotify. Yeah. So wait, are you talking about? Let me explain. You, let, let me explain. In the morning, when you're about to, like you all, you're all in the yard, right? And you want to go to the classroom. Each grade lines up uh, behind each other, and in order to like manage the distance, you put your arm up then on the person's shoulder in front of you, and then you put it beside you, and then grade by grade you mm-hmm. go up. But it looks a lot like a Nazi military camp. But yeah. why do you put your hand... Because that thing has been... I've been in scenarios where you do the distancing, right? You First of all, you put your hand in front of you, and then you put your hand to the side. So you get the exact distance between each person, right? 
But I, then what's this? I believe it's what's like, the ra- so who are people who are listening? What's the pointing to the sky? I believe it's because it's better to do like this and bring it down what? rather than just like pulling, <laughs> putting your arm out like straight out of nowhere and the person in front of you shoots like a domino effect until the front of the uh, the line. Shit, like man. that's why. Like, but yeah, they, they. I remember specifically one time they sacrificed the sheep in front of our school. I think I've told you guys the story. Yeah, I remember. Yeah, I just didn't know these. Okay, so <laughs> it's it's like a very funny thing where. Like imagine doing that now with the woke culture that's there and be like, it's yeah. still being Guys, happening. We don't have that in Iran. Yeah, but by the Sheeps way, sheep are getting killed every day. It's not a. It's not. It's it's like a cultural thing that's like rooted from religion because of the whole Abraham sacrificing the sheep instead of his son. That's why that thing is. No, no, no. I understand that completely. And and even look, if you think about it, if you think about it, uh, the way of sacrificing these animals, at least I mean, like in Ramadan, when when you want to do charity, you'd sacrifice. Uh, a goat and then give the the meat or, or a sheep you give the meat then to the poor as a that's charity, yeah. that's what happens by the way it's not like we we just slit the throat and throw in the like a <laughs> garbage <laughs> and then like you just grab it by the leg and fling it out like it's it's that's how it's done like you mm-hmm. do that then you you donate the meat to the butcher they'll properly clean it and then they give it oh, out okay because because i mean like that makes sense but i think here we do it in a different way where it's I think when it's more like it's not like for the like imagine Burj Khalifa how many goods they have to no it's, it's not like it's not compared every to the story size level <laughs> that's about to be maybe <clears throat> giveaway or, uh, it's gonna be forty two thousand line them up <laughs> actually it'd be easy to just Brooke shoot them like, Brooke, imagine the butcher he's like I'm tired grandpa <laughs> no like. But uh, his story is funnier than mine. Like, repeat it, because if it's on the episode that we didn't air, or it's one of the early episodes, but mine was that, like, they were doing it, but there was not a lot of audience. Like, everyone was in the playground playing. Then I saw, like, the principal and everyone, like, heading out towards, like, the street area in front of the school. So, like, what the fuck they're doing? I remember this, like, very clear, because, like, it got hacked in my head. I was drinking uh, chocolate milk. And I remember, like, as, like, I was, like, what they're doing, like, curious. I snuck from like the door and I like looked at them and I was like, it's a sheep. And I was like, first grade, they slit the throat. The sheep shat itself like right immediately. And this man was having choke on them. <laughs> Bro, the smell of like the blood and the shit like hit my nose all like simultaneously. I legit remember I gagged like as I was drinking. I don't think I drank chocolate milk for like a week because <laughs> I was like traumatized by it. And I just saw it. <laughs> Mine was pretty similar to be honest. <laughs> Our principal, uh, our <laughs> our principal was about. I think he was about to go to Hajj. Is mm-hmm. that what it's Hajj, called? Hajj. Yeah. Or he just came back from Hajj, and they were gonna. Uh, we didn't know they were gonna sacrifice a sheep. I was like, was well, I don't remember. I was very young. So they bring us all out of school. We go stand in front of the school in the road, and I see that sheep. I'm like, oh, they're cute, whatever. And they lay down, like they give it a water, I think first, and then they say something, uh, yeah. like a prayer. <laughs> <laughs> biryani, biryani. <laughs> <laughs> no, but then they laid it on his side and just I was like, oh, what's gonna happen? They're gonna like shave his hair off or something, and then just go wham. Yeah. And if I remember correctly, the blood got on my shoes. <laughs> <laughs> if I remember correct, I don't know if I made this up or not. I could make such a good movie of this, bro. And, like, and that's my villain story. <laughs> <laughs> like, it could mean that after the, that could day, be that why had... we're so like deep. dark. What do you call it? That Dude. was the day Barnia would play chicken with trucks. More blood. <laughs> <laughs> blood. Desensitized. Desensitized. Yeah. yeah. But yeah, the, the sheep shat itself and there was blood and they don't wash off the blood for some reason. And they started like putting their hands on the blood and they put it on like your car plate number and shit for good luck. I, I oh yeah, that's that. the funny part about yours that I probably missed because I went inside because I was always yeah. I think you went to a different school, bro. It's like <laughs> oh, I definitely went to a different school. school yeah. <laughs> I don't know. I mean like, you know, cult. <laughs> it's like, now put the blood on your face. <laughs> bro, our <Simba>. principal tape. <laughs> Kurosh, what is your name? <laughs> the Antichrist. <laughs> Oh my god, Fuck, Jesus. Back bro, li- bro, okay, so I didn't kill the goat, they d- so, the sheep. They I don't did. know if you've seen this movie, it's called The Omen. You've mentioned this a few times, and I know where this you conversation is going. I yep. swear you're the kid, I swear, man. If you watch The Omen, I feel like actually you mentioned this when he was saying the story because I remember this you telling us about how he's the devil's child. Oh, this has happened multiple times. No, but it was <laughs> right after the first time you mentioned it. And the thing is that I'm so lucky because. If it's true, and listen, if in the future, like it happens that he so happily has to be the the son of the devil, I've got Wasta, like I've got 
connections because he's my friend, you know? Like, hey, man, listen. I love how he's like, hey, man, like, he's my friend. Like, <laughs> I love you, man. By the way, like. <laughs> you know, by the way, that kind of like all of us burning. Could I like? Uh, <laughs> Can I get a jacuzzi? <laughs> <laughs> but Can that, it be a sauna? <laughs> you know what I realized? Like, so we used to do it in Ramadan where um, in, the, in the month of Ramadan, at the end of it, we would sacrifice a goat and give it to the poor, right? My dad didn't really uh, think straight and he would bring the goat at the beginning of the month to stay with us for a month. Oh shit! And oh. then at the end of the month, did you give it names? Billy. <laughs> no, but this Billy was like dead, dead already. Oh, Billy was <laughs> long gone. I, I don't know if it was before Billy or after Billy. This was, must have been before. So just like a head, like yeah, it was I'll, just a I'll, I'll, You want me to give the? No, you, you, you go ahead. Basically, Billy was when when I used to go. My best friend. <laughs> when I went to a family's house, they had brought a goat to celebrate us coming over, and you know it was a big event, and there were many people, and uh, I I didn't know about this uh, sacrificing of goats and such. Or sheep. So I was petting it. I'm like, oh my god, they have a pet, a pet sheep or goat, whatever. And then they killed it in front of me. So, yeah. And it's in an episode we talked about before. It scarred me. I called him Billy. His name was Billy. Uh, but yeah, before my dad used to have, we used to have a goat in the garden, bro. And, and we'd be like, oh, he's so cute. And it let us, bro, man, this goat would let us touch, like, like, like pet him. Never did anything. And then just one day he wasn't there anymore. And my dad's like, yeah, we killed him. <laughs> Shit. I, you know uh, <laughs> what's his <Eat> name? <laughs> <laughs> what are we eating today? Your friend. <laughs> but did, did I tell you that the like my grandma killed uh, a pet of ours? Not ours. Uh, basically, my mom's pet. So define pet by the so, actual animal. So we'll so a hedgehog. All right, no, that's fine. Eh. Why the Dude, fuck did why? you have a hedgehog in England? My mom. Ah, my mom okay. had a, my, had was, a, was that the same grandma that would tie ropes around bees and shit? Was no, that my, your story? No, no, my grandma. No, no, my, my mate taught me that. She's from the Philippines, and she she used to be like, "Do you want to like like?" She was very in, like innovative, but kind of like a sadistic murderer at the same time. She would come and be like, "In Philippines, we have this thing where they would she'd catch a beetle, you know, those big beetles with right. horns, and she'd remove its legs, mm. like remove them, and then put a rope around the the body of it, and then spin it, and it goes, <laughs> and she'd be like, here for you. And I'm looking at this thing, and it's like, kill me, please. <laughs> kill me. Put me out of this misery. Yeah, bro. Imagine, you know, she, like, they, they have some crazy-ass games, like in the Philippines. When when we had nothing to do when we were on, on vacation, she would get two spiders and put them in a bottle, and she'd be like, that's your spider, that's my spider, let them fight to death. And All her right. spider always won. She must have known... <laughs> Yeah. She uh, had a champion. Experience, maybe like it could have been a factor here. Yeah. And you know what's terrifying? I would bring that spider into my room and be like, "Good job, Johnny. You really you fought well today." And then one day, Johnny wasn't there. <laughs> Johnny's like all like crushed, like halfway. Hey, like, forget about it. Hey, yeah. <laughs> like, thanks, Faisal. But <laughs> by the time Faisal is like sixteen, he's on like Johnny thirty five. <laughs> all the Johnnies are dead. <laughs> Man, I'm telling you that that, that shit was crazy. But uh, you shouldn't be allowed to have pets, bro. <laughs> like no, all I, the childhood I, memories. <laughs> You know what pet I'm, I'm planning to get, and hopefully, if uh, like I think I'm, I might use my bonus to get is an octopus. I'm not joking. Do you, the expense wise, you understand like how the it could, it, how expensive get, it is. Yeah. Expensive it is. The aquarium size that you need I've to get always for wanted, I've Can always, I ask why? More okay. important. Yeah. So, <laughs> yeah. Okay. Okay. So my favorite animal, like a, I would say, it used to be a wolf and stuff like a bear and all that right. kind of stuff. But there's a Netflix documentary called The Octopus's Garden. Have you seen it? No. That that documentary made me bawl my eyes out. Like cry, dude. Like, you know, therapeutic crying. Because listen to the whole story about it, yeah? Uh, a wildlife documentary director uh, in, in Australia, beside his house, he has basically uh, taken a hiatus, which means like he's taking a break. And every morning, he's like, you know what? Let me go to the beach and swim around. And they have like this small lagoon area where it's like covered off. So you know how like in the beach, you'll have an area that's like a secluded ecosystem. Yeah. And when he's swimming there, he's like, you know what? I might as well film. So he's filming and he's filming and he finds uh, an octopus that's there. And this octopus's whole environment is that small ecosystem. And he's like, you know what? Um, I... Octopuses are very intelligent, by the way. They're the, yeah, one yeah, of the yeah. most intelligent creatures out there. Well, low key, like think they're yeah. aliens, but okay. Yeah, they, they literally are aliens. Bro, like, have you seen the camouflage ones? Bro, that's beautiful. That, that, that's by the way, they even can change the texture. I know. Yeah. That's how crazy it is. And it's not like 
this is black this is red it's like yeah, fucking yeah. like this is cement <laughs> like, like, bro, bro, like bro literally so, 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 on the sh- <laughs> so on the show he starts following this one feeds it and says you know what it's not gonna remember me it's not gonna do this I think six months to eight months to a year pass by and he develops a relationship with this thing and documents its whole life from its beginning to its end and dude that shit man <laughs> bro that I think it got an, I think it might, might have got an Oscar or something like that but it was okay. fantastic it, dude and so what are you going to do with this octopus? So so you can get you can get a there's certain sizes of octopus and I'm going to get <laughs> no, I don't, didn't mean it that way. <laughs> Sick bastard. <laughs> I mean funny enough octopus tastes amazing, okay? That's not yeah. what he was thinking. I know, I know, but I'm saying is I'm thinking I'm trying to think about it in a better way. Right. Uh, eating it? Yeah, that's yeah. a better way. But the thing is that you can get a hu- like I wouldn't say a huge aquarium, but you can get it the width of this table. And a little bit higher, and you can build like a sort of cave area, and it, it, it will just live there. You feed it, and you can change color and stuff like that. And they don't really have a huge area where they roam, so it'll be fine for it. What, what happened to getting eat? a dog or a cat? You know? I've had like eight dogs. Maybe stop, actually. Because <laughs> eight is a big number. Nah, man, I, I, no, I, I know all the dogs you've had, like most of them. <laughs> I, I don't mean it like that, but eight is a number that like, no, but maybe the, don't come. The, the how, how long do they like, live for? I mean, I, I, have, I haven't really had luck with animals, especially dogs, because um, a lot of them have died from really bad sort of scenarios and, and diseases. No, but like a healthy octopus, how long do they live for? Oh, an octopus? Um, I'm not I know how long sure, a dog lives 12, for. 15 years? Mm-hmm. But but, right, this, so. uh, but the thing is that with an octopus, so with an octopus, you you can actually like, dude, they watch you, they know you, like, they even are the most important, like they're they're really good at escape, and you can even like put puzzles, and they can solve the puzzles to get to food. Have you seen them escape a jar? Yeah. Yeah, terrifying. Yeah. They actually escape the aquarium. That's why you have to make it like yeah. proof. But to be honest. It's it's just a beautiful animal that I would love to have, but again, if you really love an animal, would you want to put it in captivity? No, but yeah. So you've seen the boys. <laughs> oh, you sick bastard! What happened with the hedgehog? <laughs> yeah, well, so I, I don't know. My mom or my my mom's sisters. Uh, so they're Italian, right? So okay. so uh, <laughs> my mom, I think, saved it and brought it into the house. And then when um, when my mom came back, they cooked it. The grandma cooked it. Thinking it was chicken. Food, food, yeah. <laughs> thinking it was food. <laughs> How do you kill a hedgehog? <laughs> I think the same way you kill a goat. No, no, it's just like you know. I'm, <laughs> <thinking>. <laughs> I'm just imagining your grandmother in that situation. She sees a live hedgehog. <laughs> how do you, How do you go from that to? Oh, that looks like food. <laughs> Well, I mean, you know, um, was she like a, a war survivor or something? Like, because <laughs> she used to just like killing anything that moves. Like, you know, it's funny thinking. So, I, I like to look at history a lot, and <laughs> you know, um, so my mother's family comes from Italy, and they were in the World War Two. Okay. So they have documented uh, scenarios of my mom's family who have been in the war and what happened to them. We had one uncle. <laughs> He's like the only guy who died on a ship bombing. Like they bombed an Italian ship and he was the guy standing outside and they got him. Like they hit him. Like the explosion right. didn't kill anyone except him. Damn, that's bad luck. That's yeah. that's bad luck, man. Yeah, had to kill and some sheep's there. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's <laughs> why. <laughs> but um, yeah, I mean, I, no, in the, in the south of Italy and all this, I mean... The cuisine is very different. In Italy, you they do. Bro, I've been to Italy. I've never seen hedgehog I mean, on the menu. Bro, I don't think people go around and like, would you like some? He-? Why does he have a French accent? Like, would you like some hedgehog? Have you seen the movie with uh, Sebastian? Ma- what was it? Maniscalco. Maniscalco. Yeah, with yeah. Robert De Niro. Yeah, have you seen the movie? So, by your confused face, I'm saying no. I'm guessing no, because you're just staring like with like no, question but, mark face. Or, like, get ready for it to be spoiled. Go ahead. I mean, no, it's really funny and everything, but the guy is like from Italy, basically, and <laughs> it's just like I get it, <laughs> like how he, the dad does shit, like Robert De Niro in the movie, how he acts and what he does. I don't want to give spoilers out. <laughs> it's called about my father. It's really, yeah. it's really good. So it's about this like Italian family, Sebastian and his father is Robert De Niro, and he wants to marry this like super white, uh, rich girl, 
and he takes the father from like a tiny like Italian style New York house, I think, to meet the family, and then it's just like the, how the clash of like the cultures are between the families, and the movie is like a comedy movie about that. But uh, it's a good movie. Yeah, it was a good. There's movie. a lot of these movies where, like, you. I, I think there's a couple where um, you have a Palestinian. Was it Palestinian or was it an Arab man who's marrying a Greek woman, and the cult, or Turkish man marrying a Greek? There was woman? one with. Uh, Wait, was was Zoolander? What my what? Big, my big fat Greek wedding? No, the one with Kumar. Who's Kumar? Uh, Lovebirds or something? I don't know. I don't. But uh, it was, that was about how he met his wife. There's, there's a lot of these like cultural mix wedding yeah. like scenarios. There was the one with Jonah Hill that came out last year with uh, yeah. Eddie Murphy. Oh, yeah, yeah. I, but I, I haven't seen that one yet. The By the way, you know how we said in one of the episodes about Obama's love letter? Yeah. So uh, I was talking to one of our mutual friends and he was saying, did you, get, did you guys bring up the whole thing because of the beginning of that movie? And I forgot to clip that in one of our clips. At the beginning, Jordan Hill is actually on a podcast. He's saying my Obama is gay. And then the love letter thing came out. Really? Yeah. It came out in that movie? Is that old? No, I mean, no. <laughs> He's been he gay was for just, a while, man. <laughs> it was a comedy scenario where he was like, my Obama is gay. My Obama is this and that. Oh. And then like later on, the news came, the whole love letter shit like that. So he was saying that it would actually be pretty funny if we could have clipped that thing and... Uh, because I mm. never watched the movie. It was a movie. The, the movie's not good. Really? It's, it's too it's long. It's like a cheap rom-com, right? It's, and also, like, they made it, like, they were trying to, like, present this situation between, uh, like, two different cultures. And, like, it was so forced. Yeah, it was yeah. so obvious. Yeah. It's forced. It wasn't, like, a naturally flowing conversation. I feel like, like Eddie Murphy doesn't really have to try anymore because he's so established. Eddie Murphy specifically doesn't do stand-up because he's like, I can't top what I did 20 years ago. So It's a smart way of looking at yeah. it. Uh, by the way, sp- uh, because I mentioned the boys, you guys definitely need to watch Gen V. I, I finished it. You finished it? I told you about the last time. I said, bro, have you seen Gen V? I said, I'm going to start it, right? Don't want you to have me relax. But I'm not 28 like this. <laughs> I'm 20 like this. Like, I'm yeah, not you a- better watch yourself. <laughs> I don't want to go back in the basement, man. I'm sorry. <laughs> it's all good. It's all good. Bro, Gen V is really good. It's really good. Did you finish all of it? No, only one episode. Okay, so guys, uh, if you don't know, uh, Gen V is... So anyone here who knows the boys, uh, Gen V is like a prequel to what's happening in... Actually, I think it's at around the same time, but the overall premise behind it is think of the chaos of the boys, but put it into a university. Oh, so good. Yeah. Right. And also the cartoon, Diabolical. (laughs) Yeah, Diabolical, but this is like a fully-fledged TV show with the same budget... It's it's really good. It's man. Really you should there's watch. a lot of good shows right now out. Uh, Loki season two is out, yeah. which I, I yeah. still haven't watched. But I love there's, there's like three episodes out. I think that one is out. Power, uh, power. What is it? Power book five or something? I think so. With power with fifty cent. Fifty cent. Well, the original power was uh, fifty cent, and then this guy Tommy and uh, I forgot the other guy's Ghost. character, Ghost. And then that franchise basically became like each character got their own franchise series. And one of them is power number four, I think, which is this white guy that's like been into oh. a drug game and he goes to Chicago and takes over hmm. Chicago drug game, which is really good show. Are you talking about power with Sylvester Stallone? No. No, no so Sylvester Stallone has a TV show also. That's the no, that one is called... Uh, it's called Power. Two, uh, King of two, Tucson King or something? Uh, Tulsa King. Tulsa, Tulsa King. King, that's a good that one. That one is amazing. And I think season two got approved. It's going to come yeah, out. No. I I think there's a lot of good shows. I told you guys about this one called Blackbird. I don't know if any of you. Yeah, I watched it. I watched it because of you. Think? That was the prison one, right? What do you think? That was amazing. It was a really good show. And the actors, both of them, really good show. The, you know the other guys, nothing's wrong with them? Yeah, I know. I know from other shows, other movies and Bro, stuff. Bro, if you can, like, okay, so I, I don't know if you guys saw the Jeffrey Dahmer TV show. It was horrible. horrible. Wait, the documentary or the one that it was acting one? Well? Acting. Oh, I want to kill myself. It was so fucking slow. Yeah, but the whole thing is that they want to, you know, stretch it out. And, yeah, yeah, I don't But like the it. actor himself was... The actor was amazing. Yeah. It's just about three episodes too long. Yeah, man. Just kill him already, you know? What are you waiting for? Why are you flirting with him? Because he was a... Uh, yeah, flirt quicker, you know? Flirt quicker. <laughs> flirt quicker. <laughs> I like you. <laughs> Come get some. <laughs> get it to my house. I get got a dick it. for you. <laughs> Let's go. <laughs> but, um, yeah, these TV shows are... Fantastic. By the way, you can tell if I was gay, I would never get laid. <laughs> that risk game. <laughs> you want some dick tonight? Let's go. 
<laughs> you get a dick. You get a dick. <laughs> I think from all the cannibal shit you've been talking about, if you were gay, you'd be like the next Jeffrey Dahmer. The next? He's the inspiration. <laughs> for but um, oh, yeah, a lot of TV shows coming out. And oh, uh, there's a new one. I don't know the name, but you know how in John Wick they have the Continental? Yeah. They I've made a that. show about... About the Continental. Yeah. Have you seen the show or not? It's I haven't watched it yet. No, me neither. But I watched that one, and then uh, I think Love on the Spectrum is out again. I'm not going to watch that show. Bro, it's so good. It, the the I, producers are fucking assholes. I know. But, but it makes for such a good that, show. Like, I don't, it's funny to see clips of it, you know? Yeah, yeah. Not to enough. commit to f- watch. Like, there's so many good shows out. <laughs> to, like, if I have the time, like, I want to watch those. Now. <laughs> yeah, true, true. I would say another TV show that you guys should watch is called The Foundation. Have you guys heard of it? No, so Foundation is basically, so there's two, right? There's called um, Amongst Wolves or something like that. And there's another one called The Foundation. And The Foundation is basically a sci-fi show about looking at it in overall the future. Mm-hmm. How, how humanity looks in the future. And this big divide between social, uh, uh, how would you say it? Social classes and uh, if you look at it in the sense of um, science and religion. Okay. So uh, there's another TV show that comes out, and I don't know if you guys have seen it. It's, it was really famous, and it was on a- Apple TV. It's basically about how scientists and religious people split into two empires. Okay. And the scientists and the uh, religious sect fight, and the scientists use AI uh, or uh, robots. And these robots attack the religious segment. They have a civil war, or uh, one way to survive is the scientists are actually losing. Okay. So they send a ship out and the ship has embryos of babies and they send it to a distant planet and they have an AI war machine that actually is calibrated to take care of the children and to raise a new society of people that have, there's no such thing as religion. Oh shit. Yeah. Would you spoil anything here or like this was the, I'm sure you could get this from a trailer. It, because I'm like now I'm really interested in watching it. It's but not. Yeah. I haven't spoiled anything. Oh, yeah. Yeah. it's a really like that sounds it, amazing, bro. It's a really like if you watch it, the first of all, the budget is fucking huge. It's an Apple one, you said. Apple. Yeah, Apple. Like, does Apple some came, good shows. Apple came to play. You yeah. know what I mean? Like, wait. So it's uh, let's think about it. Like, so you said the scenario is religion and science are going to war against each other. What the fuck was religious people using? Because you said scientists are using robots. What the religious people? So are I using? mean, okay. So I don't want to. I don't want to ruin so much. Is it cross like. <laughs> no, no, no. But this is throwing. Darts is it like using? one religion or all the religions? No. So it's okay. So or it's like a mixture. no, no, no. So it's like you see, you have two two parts to play here, right? One sect believes that everything can be explained by science, and the right. other sect believes. First of all, it's transcended what religion is now. So because. You have interstellar, um, interstellar, interstellar travel. The religion itself has become the uh, religion of light. Oh, okay. So, so, so one word. Um, I think they call it Solaris or something like that. That's the god, which is basically the sun, right? Right. And um, they believe in. It's like they've, you know, they've still have that um, trait of you know we have a priest. You have to listen to the priest. But then you have the people who are scientists. And the scientists lost out on the war. So they sent the ship out. Mm. And there's a constant battle between these two. And from the beginning of the show, you're in the eyes of the children. Right. Okay, and the kids okay. have no idea what the mother really? is. Because they were raised by the AI. Yeah. That's a crazy show. And and the thing is that you have to watch it because it gets... It's like... I don't know. It's, it's so well done. Mm. And there's things of... There's, you know, the aspect of... Can computers or robots truly love? You know, truly humanity is, is 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 can hu- truly love. Can love. They, can they love? Oh. Is humanity going to ascend to a level where it doesn't have to be biologically human? You know what I mean? Do we lose that human trait? You know what I mean? That's a great question. And there's another there's another very good movie I watched recently, which was called. Um, it was in the cinema just recently. The one with uh, Denzel Washington's son. Yeah. Do you remember the name? Uh, I'll find it. I got it. it. Yeah. That, so a lot of people said to me the movie wasn't that great and all this kind of stuff. But it really does bring... I still haven't watched it. I don't know what it's about. I just saw the poster. Do you mind if I say the overall scenario? No, say it. Just spoiler. It's not spoiler. It's basically, if you read the synopsis of the movie, you'll know. 
human beings and AI. Mm. Um, this guy is John David Washington's son. Yeah, yeah. I had no. This guy is the same guy who played in Tenet. Tenet. Yeah, yeah. What the fuck? Yeah, he was what in Tenet. The fuck? What he, the fuck? <laughs> All right, Mickey Mouse. He was in. Huh? Uh, he was in Ballers too. Yeah, yeah. 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 I had no idea. You know, what? he used to be an NFL player, but he tore his um, dude I think it was ACL or something like that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I remember the. Mo- I know exactly what movie you're even talking about. The creator. Was, the creator. The creator. Yeah. Yeah. What was yeah. it? So the overall concept of that is yeah, another big question, right? Um, the world advances in such a way AI becomes a race itself, right? Based on whatever happens, there's conflict between them. And then the overall idea is, uh, are AI a part of us? Are AI um, a threat to us? Or are AI going to propel us to the future where we will be a society of people that don't start war and stuff and like are we going to become one with them or is it going to be them and us it's, no but if you watch the movie it's it's not like you assimilate which means like you you get absorbed into ai and you're half there's so many possibilities of it and thank you guys for watching this episode of the podcast sorry for the very sudden end uh, this episode ran a bit longer than we thought and the topic completely changed so we decided to cut it into two parts you can check out part two in the link below in the description i think yeah. Oh, you just not. <laughs> yeah. Oh, sorry. <laughs> you can so you can, yeah, you, yeah, you can get it. I'll put it in the description and also we'll link it in one of the videos that pops yeah. up at the end. Uh, thank you guys for watching this episode of our podcast. Hopefully you enjoyed. And if you did, don't forget to like and subscribe and also check out our social media channels. We will see you shortly in part two. <laughs> yeah. See you see in you the guys. next one, mate. Bye-bye.